and to be able to make furniture that nobody's ever seen before. And I guarantee when you see this doghouse that can be printed at large size, medium size, and small size, you'll be amazed at what the capability of imagination is way beyond those first tables that were on the lakeside and in the city. This is an ecotourism company that basically provides, or excuse me, an eco art group company that provides a destination resorts with art that can go inside and outside. These totems are in a uh, facility in Mexico right now that shows the capability to take designs. The design on the left is a CAD image, sliced, rendered, pardon me, rendered, sliced, printed the same week that we saw the CAD image, and then Instagram shots were being taken of it and was being marketed uh, physically at a show. This was the first instantiation of taking a product that was designed in less than a day, married with our flats supplier that did the marble tops that were on top, and it is the first embedded chip inside the furniture that we've done that now tracks all the data from what comes out of the robot and the data logging system that we work with with Seed to be able to let you know where your individual serialized piece of furniture was made and what material content is in it to make it ready for what's next. So we'll talk about that in a second. We bring in about 20 tons of granules every six weeks. 20 tons of granules every six weeks. And it goes out, that 20 tons, in about 15 trucks this size. So the inflation factor, so to speak, we all think about inflation in terms of monetary value. We think about inflation from granules going into furniture. The inflation factor is about 15x for the number of granules that come in. So to recap what we do at this stage is we make furniture for circularity to change people's lives. These are some of the museum quality, the commercially affordable planters that we started with. They're not just planters. They're also capable of being fully waterproof and they can move through freezing cycles and they are fully UV stable. That makes them planters with a mission, so to speak. This is some of the office furniture that we pioneered doing things as simple as a bookcase that can be delivered in segments or can be done all at once. And this has attracted the attention of two museums in uh, our hometown of St. Petersburg. And that furniture on the left we saw is in the Furniture Hall of Fame in the United States. That's the first chair printed from recycled ocean fishing nets in a design to mimic those fishing nets from which they came. This was our attempt to do an ice bath. And when I say attempt, we designed the product in two weeks and then we hosted 200 people for an ice bath session with the Wim Hof Guru at our factory in St. Pete. This is really how we think about community give back. We did this for our team. We showed off that we could print things that were waterproof and could work through zero degrees centigrade up into the Florida heat. But what it really did is it launched people in wellness clubs that were interested in furniture that we could do. And just this past week, we delivered our first full set of wellness club furniture based on this event. So it also shows that the way in which we're bringing up designs in a community is changing and growing. And this here is introducing the ready to assemble furniture line that we uh, met for a designer that met us at Form Next. And now we're expanding this capability because what we're talking about is we're talking about furniture that's no longer printed in Z. It's much like that monolithic mold that's over there, but really efficiently using the material in order to be able to get you a table that can support 500 pounds but it weighs in itself about two kilograms. So you've got 200 kilograms being held on two kilograms of material. You can dress it up with a marble top, or you can dress it down with a really simple recycled rice husk and PVC uh, uh, board that you can put on to make it uh, continually recyclable. So just a note on our materials, you've seen many of the materials here, but today, this year, is the dawn of biomaterials coming in to take 30% not 30% of a technical materials volume, but alone 30% of what we're going to ship out this year. So that means 70% technical material, 30% full biomaterial composites. It means you're segmenting customers already, and that's what we're seeing in the market where people want to see furniture on the inside that's made of something they can compost and furniture on the outside. When we quote a customer, we're using small scale FDM where if they want a large pot, we're gonna print them a small pot and we send it to them in a sample box. That means that they can dream about the table or the piece of furniture that they're gonna have and set it down on their desk before they place an order to buy it. This talks a little bit about the way that we think of materials. They're separated by spheres of use, 
and effectively the regenerative biosphere are things that are going to dip below the surface of the earth and go back into the earth. Those are our biomaterials. And the circular technosphere are things that started as dinosaur bones. They were pulled out of the earth. They turned into a practically one form of an ethylene chain. And then uh, they are turned into roughly uh, polymer composites, much like the PETG mix that we print today. They're other technical materials, and they print well. But this really is exciting customers on the interior. Here in this show, there's a lot of talk about natural fibers. Natural fibers that are used with commensurate biopolymers that match their linear thermal expansion and contraction, and that behave well in the high heat thermoplastic environment that we put them through, are really going to change interior furniture. When we print today biomaterials, the whole factory smells like what it is that we're printing. So it makes a big difference. It's like walking into a wood shop of old. Now you're walking into a wood shop of new, of printed furniture. So it's exciting to see the customer reaction to those things. And now we want to give them more ways to engage. So we're we are producing gigabytes of information out of the data logging program with Seed. And then what we're doing is we're augmenting it with all of the material data that we're putting into the furniture. And then we're putting that into a serialized piece that goes out the door. Everything is logged in the cloud in a scalable infrastructure, and it's callable by an RFID chip that you can tap with your phone on the piece of furniture. What that gives our customers the opportunity to do is upsell their customers when people tap that API. What it allows us to be able to do, excuse me, when they tap the RFID tag, what it allows us to be able to do is know where every single kilogram of material is that we printed so that we can get it back in order to be able to recycle it and use it again. If you have a chance to go over to AirTech's booth, which is over there, one of the exciting things you can see is you can see that they've made a mold for vacuum bagging for a splitter on a Porsche race car. And that very same mold is being made out of the mold that it was before, after they ground off the surface, and then they remade the mold. That's great utilization for what might, we might call scope two emissions. This is addressing scope three emissions because what it really means is that we're tracking furniture so that the consumers don't have to get the value that they think is the end of it and then dump it in the trash. They can take the furniture and turn it back into another piece of furniture that looks new. And so when we look at what that means is we're taking all the telemetry data that's for all of the in input that's going in, we're taking that data telemetry and we're putting it into the furniture in the, uh, serialized in the cloud. And this is some of the research that we were doing for responsiveness. So what's exciting about most of the materials is we can get less than a two second, in some cases less than a one second time, over 30 years of use of the RFID inside this material. That's exciting because it means that it's not a battery item like an AirTag that will ever go dead. It means that you can always engage with us and you can always engage with the customer the retailer that you bought this furniture through. It will enable games like geocaching, it will enable things like who's the most famous butt that ever sat in this chair. You can have all kinds of things that happen when you start to engage. And maybe things as simple as I'm sitting here in this airport, we're in this show, and I don't know what the Wi Fi address is, but I'm at this table, and it will have the latest up to date information and allow you to log in. It's just an easier way to engage in the built environment and have fun doing it. So, how we do it? Seed robots. I can say right now with confidence there is absolutely no system in the world that makes it possible to print furniture at a commercial scale, and we bought six of them. There is no system in the world and no team that can support it as much as this seed team has done. So what you see here, thank you, thank you. What you see here is the result of seven years of research and a lot of money spent in order to be able to make a decision. And so I can make it easy for you who are hunting around to try to figure out what system to buy. If you want to scale, this is the way to do it. And it allows us to be able to do many more things. And one of the things is to be able to engineer a new micro factory like this. This will be the first dual color, dual material, dual robot operating using a cinematic one control environment for us to be able to print furniture at commercial scale. Those tables that you see in between the robot lanes are what allow us to be able to get in, get the furniture off, get it in a box quickly, and get it off to a customer. Okay, so what I would say is what Zara did to the fashion industry is what Hattie is doing to the furniture industry. I'm going to say that again. What Zara did to the fashion industry is what Hattie is doing to the furniture industry. When you go to a premium retailer like Roche Beaubois or Rose Ligier, 
you will see furniture that is developed over months, and in most cases, years. And when you go to a value retailer, like a Target in the United States, or a Walmart, or a Carrefour, you will see furniture that is developed over months and years. There is no difference between the scale and the time it takes for them to be able to make furniture. What you don't see also is you don't see the enormous supply chain that makes that furniture possible today. What you do see is you see that when you order a piece of furniture, it's usually out of stock, and it is usually the same piece of furniture that they sell in all of their stores across the world. And the reason is not because you ask for the same piece of furniture to take a year to make, but it's because they simply can't make furniture when they don't 3D print it. Because they're driving furniture production, whether it's a premium piece of furniture or a value piece of furniture, to the lowest wage rate shops that they can make furniture. And that is the way we've always done it since we were carving round stones at Stonehenge. This is the first time that I can go to bed at night and my furniture is being made without a human in the loop. And that's exactly how we do it at Hattie today. I go to bed, all of our team goes to bed, and the robots work overnight. Don't tell that to our insurance company. This is one of our robots before it went on a rail, and it gives you a look at what it can print. Today it's printing in one color, but it can print multiple styles and shapes at multiple heights. So it's great. You can see an example of the mold being printed over here before it's milled. You can see an example of furniture being printed here before it's milled. And so where we do it right now, we do it, sadly, so far away from Paris that I can't walk you out the door to see our factory. This is a sneak peek of the factory. At the beginning of this week, we broke ground. A lot of planning has gone into this. A lot of planning with our, uh, with our partners at Seed and with all of the other partners from the material companies that we buy from and all of the logistics train. It will open in July of this summer and I invite you to come to Florida to see the world's first micro factory that's printing furniture. So thank you for letting me take your time today and hopefully it's a glimpse of what the wonderful composites in the world and the great robotics and most importantly the great humans that make this happen are doing in Florida and soon I hope around the world. Cheers.